In this video, I'll show you how to import an EPA net model to your InfraWizard project on AutoCAD. You'll then be able to produce CAD plans and longitudinal profiles for your network in a few minutes. InfraWizard can directly import the INP file format of EPA net. The good thing is that many hydraulic modeling applications like WaterGems and InfoWater can also export their models into the INP format, which is a good way to import network models from them to InfraWizard. Here I have an EPA net model for a water distribution network. I'll export an INP file from it. I'll then go to InfraWizard and select Import EPA Net command. Let's import the model to a new network and call it PW. I'll then browse to the model file and pick it. Here I should set some criteria that InfraWizard uses during the import process. The first setting is the minimum soil cover. InfraWizard needs this because an EPA net model contains only one elevation value at each junction. InfraWizard assumes that this value represents the ground level at the junction, which is the common practice. It then uses the minimum soil cover to offset the invert levels of the pipes from these ground levels. The next setting is pipe matching at node. It's set by default to centerline, which means that the pipes of different diameters connected to one node will have the same center level at this node, which is also the common practice in pressurized water networks. The last setting is the pipe material. You have to select a material for your pipes because every pipe in an InfraWizard project should be associated with a material from the pipe library. But an EPA net model doesn't define the pipe materials. I'll then click OK. And here is my water network added in blue color. This is my new PW network. And there's another network here which we created in the previous session of this tutorial. You can notice that InfraWizard has calculated the pipe invert levels from the ground levels using the soil cover value we provided. I can control the format of the network plan and the annotations that appear on pipes and nodes using the plan styles here. And you can see that a crossing annotation was automatically added at each crossing point between the two networks. The crossing annotation indicates the properties of the two crossing pipes and the net vertical clearance between them. I'll then create longitudinal profiles from my network from the Manage Profiles panel. I'll select my network, PW, and click Add New. From here, I'll select Automatic Pipe Selection to let InfraWizard define the best profile routes based on the network hierarchy. You can see that InfraWizard has assembled five profiles covering the whole network according to the diameter of the pipelines. I'll select all of them to have them drawn in one go. I'll also select to show the line name and stations of my profiles on the plan. And finally, pick an insertion point for them. And here we go. I've got my profiles drawn in a second. Let's take a look at them. You can see here that the profile shows the main pipeline, the lateral pipes connected to it, and the crossing pipes of the other networks as well. The profile data bands include pipe diameter, length, slope, and material. It also shows the ground levels, invert levels, and other data. I can control the format of the profile and choose the data bands to appear on it using the profile styles. And you'll notice that the long profiles are split into parts to save drafting time, and I can specify the run length also in the profile style. If we go to the plan, you'll find that InfraWizard is showing the profile stations on the lines as well as the profile name. This is important to correlate the profile data with the pipeline alignment. Finally, let's do a 3D BIM model with a simple export. I've got all pipes assembled as 3D solids 
and I can export this to an NWC file to use it in Navisworks as well. Thanks for watching. See you in the next session.